Now, another very popular approach to data representation and interpretation is what's called geospatial data. Now, essentially, these are maps. We've had maps for many, many years, and we've been able to in, uh, present a lot of information about the spatial relationship between um, locations and objects through the use of maps. Be it a subway map that allows us to understand where different subway stations are located in relation to one another, through to a map of the Earth where we can um, explore how different countries are in relation to one another. Um, but with digital technologies, that's really transformed the nature of geospatial information. Uh, 20 years ago, we didn't have tools such as Google Maps. Uh, in order to be able to navigate, you had to be able to interpret a paper-based map, and you had to carry these paper-based maps around in your cars or wherever you were traveling. And it was a much more complicated process. With digital maps, we can now do things in much in very different ways. Uh, we can calculate, for example, how long it may take us to travel from one location to another. It can calculate the most efficient way of going from one location to another, be it if we're walking or biking or buying, going by car or going by public transport or going by aeroplane. So there's a whole range of other new solutions to problems that can be developed because we have digitized these maps. Now, it's not just the spatial relationships as well. We can also digitize a lot of demographic information, such as crime statistics or population statistics. Um, school statistics can be uh, digitized. And I've given you an activity where you can look at the catchments of where your students are attending from to your practicum school. Uh, one common thing is for teachers to uh, travel outside of their catchment when they want to go shopping so they don't come across their parents or their students as often. These are things that can be easily solved through the use of digital maps because we've got this data digitized. But there are more lots of different ways we can actually explore and our students can explore digitizing information as solutions to problems. So for example, digitizing their data about um, rubbish being collected around the school and then creating a map of their school and showing graphically through what's called a heat map, different colored intensities of where there is more rubbish and where there is less rubbish. If we take that data over time, we can then create an animation showing how as the seasons change, the distribution of rubbish around the school may change. That then means we maybe need to move the bins around a little bit in winter versus in summer as a solution to problems of the amount of rubbish in a school. So these are things that can be explored through geospatial collections of data. And I've given you an activity to create your own geospatial map um, of the places you have traveled to or would like to travel to. And by putting that into an online spreadsheet, it will turn that into a geospatial map showing these various locations. And that can help us understand by looking at it, how many of them are in different continents and you could also then go through and work out the most efficient way of traveling to them all. So it's the shortest route and a whole range of other different um, approaches that you could explore. But the first step is in creating this geospatial um, set of data, uh, this map. And you'll do that and submit a link to that for your log of learning.